So today we're going to talk about the level of phosphates in your pool and phosphates are actually food for the algae in your pool so if your level of phosphates are too high uh, no matter how much chlorine or anything else you put in your pool you will not be able to eliminate the algae from your pool. So basically if you're having trouble maintaining the level of chlorine in your pool it seems like it keeps falling off or no matter how much chlorine you put in your pool you're still getting seeing algae form then your problem is most likely a high level of phosphates in your pool and phosphates can be caused from many different things but uh, things like yard debris uh, keeping your skimmers cleaned out um, any overflow from your yard fertilizers things like that will add increase the level of phosphates in your pool so I'll be showing you how to use a product it's called Foss Free today. Uh, in my opinion, this is by far the best treatment um, for your pool to reduce the level of phosphates. Um, we're going to start off by um, testing the level of phosphates, which is, uh, we'll do that with a simple test kit that comes with the Foss Free uh, when you order it. So we're going to start off by uh, getting a sample from our pool. We'll take the uh, test tube that comes with the kit. Uh, we'll go dip it in the water. Um, it's good to be about elbows deep in the deep end and uh, fill the test tube up near with your water circulating near one of the jets so you get a representative sample. Then we're going to drop the uh, capsule that comes with the test uh, kit and then we're going to put the lid on it and then we're going to um, rotate the test tube back and forth until the capsule dissolves. Um, this will take a couple of minutes and once the capsules completely dissolve we're just gonna uh, do as the instructions say and wait six minutes um, before we check our level of phosphates once we do that we'll use the uh, gauge that they have in the package and we'll compare the color of the sample to the color on the chart you can see here uh, I've got very high level of phosphates between 500 and 1,000 parts per billion. Uh, so we're going to go uh, follow the instructions and shut our pump off and back wash our sand filter to get a clean filter to start with. So I'm going to move the valve to back wash uh, and then I'm going to turn the pump back on and then just let the uh, water back wash through the filter so we get a clean filter media. And then from there we'll uh, after we back flush for about two minutes, we're going to turn our pump back off and then we're going to reposition our valve to the filter position. Um, then we're going to turn our pump back on and wait till everything starts running good again. And we're going to go to our over to our skimmer with our phosphory solution. Uh, we're going to shake it up really well, which is important because it's a suspended solid. And then we're going to pour, in this case, I'm going to pour an entire bottle in the skimmer. And um, I'm going to do that because the pool that I have is about 36,000 gallons. And in order to reduce over 500 parts per billion, uh, in this case, I'm going to use a th an entire 3 liter bottle. And then wait 48 hours for the phosphates to get captured by the filter. Basically, the phosphory solid uh, gets captured in your sand, and as your pool water uh, flows through your sand, the phosphates are uh, captured by the phosphory solid. So now that we've waited 48 hours, our filter uh, should be full of phosphates, and what we'll do is we'll repeat our back flush to flush all the phosphates out. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn our pump off again, switch our valve over to filter, position and then you'll notice um, you'll turn the pump back on again and you'll notice that um, the water that comes out from your back flush is really white and that's the solid and the phosphates that are um, coming out of your being filtered out of your sand um, and then we're gonna once we back flush a couple minutes again uh, we'll go ahead and turn our filter back off and switch our valve back to filter position uh, just like we are uh, did before and then we'll turn our pump back on and now we're ready to do another test to verify that we've 
we did in fact reduce the level of phosphates in the pool. So we'll grab our sample like we did before. Uh, we'll drop the um, sample pellet in the um, test tube, put the lid on, uh, shake it again, or, or not really shake it, but um, tilt it back and forth till it dissolves. And then uh, once it's dissolved, um, we're going to wait uh, six minutes for the um, sample to turn color and then compare it again to our chart um, and as you can see here the uh, chart and the color looks much better we're um, under a 100 parts per billion which is what I would recommend now if the uh, level of phosphates in your pool is really high um, there's a chance that uh, the color even after the step will still be show that you have over 100 parts per billion and if that's the case I would recommend uh, repeating the entire process, adding more phosphate, waiting 48 hours and trying it again until you um, are sure that you got the level under 100 parts per billion. Uh, once you get your pool uh, phosphates down to under 100 and if you're, you maintain the chlorine level in your pool um, you shouldn't see any issues at all with algae and you also shouldn't have to use algicide or any other chemicals to control um, the algae forming in your pool. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, stay tuned and I'll continue to post videos about how to take care of your pool.